Hey everyone, Mac is back. Today I want to discuss the Bowman build. Uh, I've talked about it a lot recently about how if you're free to play you can use a Bowman build from the very beginning and have a lot of success in PvP. You can have a lot of success in some of the uh, events in the game as well like Siege of Winterfell is a very uh, good example of where bows are very good. Um, all of this has kind of either changed uh, since the beginning of the game or actually just has been discovered more recently of how strong bows actually are and I want to talk about that and kind of how to build your bow account and even if you maybe you want to transition into a bow account it may take a little bit of time and a little bit of money but uh, there is a possibility to be able to do that or a way to do that so let's get to it. Uh, the first thing I want to say is, you know, the question you want to ask is why bows? Why do you want to take bows over all the other, all the troop types? And the the answer is actually very basic. And that if you look here, this is the countering system. So you can see that spear counter cav, cav counter infantry, infantry counter spear. But you have bow in the middle that doesn't counter any single one of the other troop types, or and also they don't get countered as well. So it makes it easier that uh, when you're attacking so if I'm uh, rallying somebody or soloing somebody you always want to you know if you don't know their formation then it's you know you're going in blind a lot of times or you have to do a, a you know a, a rally first and then have to rally them again but then again they could change their formation so with bows you don't have to do that because there is if you just go a pure bow march it's just a single march you put all your resources and everything to the bow march and it's actually uh, a very good strategy to have that's the first reason the second reason is their attack is the highest in out of all troop types so at 125 uh, base attack uh, compare that to the next uh, next one up is 115 so that's 10 more which is actually quite significant overall and then it goes down to 105 and then to 93 so you can see from the just from the infantry to at, at 93 uh, compared to the uh, bows that are at 125 and then once you um, go out we, once we get the ancient infantry the actual tier fives you can see this 134 137 139 and then 150 so it's actually 11 plus 11 more than with uh, it nor uh, than uh, the second troop to, uh, that it compares to it so first I want to start in the talent tree that's where you're gonna get uh, your basics of your bow uh, attack so the, if you go down to the bottom of the tree here just off to the left you see the bowman attack 3 and if you get that maxed out that'll be 53% uh, bow attack and then go up the tree just a little bit further you see bow attack 2 and that gives you 10% and then go up a little bit further you see bow attack 1 and that gives you 7% that is a total of 70% uh, bow attack just in your talents and the next area will be the equipment which I'm going to go over I've already set it up to the pieces that you're going to need except for the Glorious set. I've not included them because most uh, players do not have Gold Glorious. So these are all assuming that it's gold. So if we look at the Storm's Rage helmet, it's going to get you at max 10% uh, Bowman attack. And then if we go to the Lofty uh, Crown here, that's gonna be the next one that you're gonna want. And it doesn't have bow attack at all, but you're gonna want that in that piece because it's the best one to give you 12% attack, 12% health, 12% defense. So that'll give you a lot of totals, which is exactly what you're gonna want. Then we move down further to the uh, Oath Leg Armor, um, which is actually very good because it'll give you a Bowman attack of 30%, which is quite significant. And then if you have the Lofty Crown Hand uh, Guard, there, that's going to be a total attack one as well. So if you increase that, you're going to get an extra 10% uh, attack on your bows for that. And then looking over here at the uh, this Memories of Roin, and if you take a look at that, you're going to get 10% bow attack there. And if you look at the Lofty Crown Crest Armor, once it's maxed out, you're going to get the bow attack of 21% plus 10% defense, which is also very, very nice to have. Going down further, the Lofty Crown Honor, this is the overall attack, will give you 16% because those are it. Uh, you just double those. And the very last piece is the Fang of Fury. And if you have this maxed out, your bow health goes to 10% uh, because that's the best piece that you can have as your third accessory. So the total on there is going to be 87% uh, attack for your um, 
for your equipment and then you'll get a little bit of health as well you get that 10 percent health there for just that last piece plus those total attacks that i didn't add in there i just added 87 percent for the uh, bow attack and now looking at your badges if you have eight pieces of your equipment and equipped with the eight bow attack badges at gold, that's 25% a piece. That's gonna give you 200% uh, attack for your, your bows. Plus you can get the bow health badges from the, um, uh, from the iron bank and the iron bank. And so that'll be give you another 200% uh, bow health uh, added on there as well. And I don't know, I've never seen them and I have, I mean, maybe they do exist, but I don't see any bow defense badges. So I don't know where that would be or how you'd have how you would get those. But the only thing to add on there, um, other badges will be maybe the would be the total attack and total health badges. So that would be the four probably the four setup that you would have would be the total attack, the total health, the um, bow health and bow attack would be the four badges you'd want on your uh, equipment. And when looking in your refinement, bow attack is going to be one that you, the the very first one that you're going to. Um, it's actually quite easy to get in, in here, of course. So it'll be probably, you'll probably get that on every single piece uh, very quickly. And if you have that maxed out, that's 40% on each piece times eight. So that's 320% bow attack is what you're gonna have in here. And for a bow setup, I would recommend still going with your army size, still going with your um, your total attack, your, uh, so army size, total attack, the bow attack of what you have, and then I would go with uh, rally size. Now you may be able, you may want to switch out depending on you know if you're going to be a rally leader or a rally tank or uh, rally filler depending on how you are because you might still want um, you might want to switch in attack and attack reduction attack reduction is best for those that are trying to um, rally a big uh, rally a big castle and attack with it that would be my recommendation. When it comes to your bow commanders. Uh, there are certain ways, there are several ways you could probably do this. You're basically going to be looking for your awakened commanders here because you're going to want that extra bonus army size. As you can see out of the ones that I have, I only have Sheila to level 10, which gives 21,000 extra. You're going to want to have all of these upgraded that way, which will be a little bit easier for you to do so because when you're talking about Kravros and Sheila, they take elite uh, tokens instead of um, you know, the epic ones. So that'll be a, a nice little bonus there as well to be able to easier to upgrade what you need. And for Sheila, the reason you're doing her is because she's gonna give you 66% bow attack. Uh, Obin's gonna give you 48% bow attack. Theon gives you one of the bigger ones. He's gonna give you 81.4% um, um, attack in general because he gives you total attack as well. So he'll actually add on a little bit more with that uh, total attack. Um, he'll also give you 48% um, uh, bow health and bow defense. So he is probably one of the better stat commanders when it comes to uh, this build. And then looking at Kravros, he'll give you 66% attack as well. And Melisandre gives you 84% attack um, and 48% defense. So she's right up there with Theon as being really, really good. When it comes to their awakening skills, um, that, that's one other thing um, about this build is you won't have to get all of these to four stars because some of their uh, abilities are really not that good to be at the four stars. They're not helping you um, in PvP. So Sheila is the one you're going to want to get to four stars because she gives you 25% extra attack. Um, Obin, you're going to skip him, get him to three stars, and that's it. Theon, the same thing, get him to three stars unless you are tanking rallies. If you're tanking rallies, then I could see you putting him in there because you could, he gives you an extra... Uh, uh, he gives you extra attack for the more troops that you have in your castle. Um, Kravras and Melisandre both also have um, good abilities that uh, from Awakening Zero will get them four stars. So you can skip Theon and you can skip um, Obin if you, um, for the most part. And the last area to uh, increase your bow is going to be in the research uh, Maester's Tower. So the very basic one is the military. We all know this one. So if you look here at the very beginning here, you're going to see there's a bow attack at 135. Um, they're going to be bow defense at 135. And the very last one here is going to be bow health at 135. And that is in your military. After that, to be able to get to increase, you're going to want to get down to the iron defense. So the iron defense in here, um, if you keep going along, you're going to be able to see here, right um, near the end of it, there's almost near the end here, you can see there's a uh, bowman weapon upgrade armor and physical. Uh, physical training so if you click on that that's an extra 
I click on it. There you go. 135%. That is ridiculous because no other troops have this extra little bonus here of 135%. So this is where the this is one area where the bows are separated from the other troops as well, is because they just have so much uh, more attack when it comes to here. And then you actually add in the extra defense and extra health as well. So and which those two are the are the are which the weakest part of the bowmen is is they don't have a, whole, a lot of health and defense. But now with this extra boost here, that's is really really good. So in the iron defense, that is that's really fantastic. And then looking at the uh, strangely garbed army, which obviously it's going to take a lot of time to go to get there. If you scroll down further, you can see here there's bowman armor. So this is here is an extra 10%. And that'll go across the board as well. 10% armor, just, uh, which is defense. And then here's the training, which is health. And there's the weapon. So you get another 10% across the board there, which will take you obviously take you a long time to do so. But uh, that's where you're going to want to uh, get that, get those uh, extra bonuses. So when things are all said and done, the overall um, numbers that I've that I calculated, and I'm a little bit off because I actually added a total attack into Theon, but I but I'm just talking about all the bow stats together so the total bowman defense from just the what i went over today is 376 percent that's what i went over so it's 376 percent you're going to add that on to whatever your total defense is and that's what you'll have for your stats um, your health um, for bowman is 538 percent and then add that on to your obviously your total health and you're going to be in very good shape there when you're uh, getting that in other places and then if you look at your total um, bow attack um, or just from bow attack you're looking at 1327.4 percent so subtract about uh, I want to say about 20 percent off of that um, well actually about right around 40 percent I apologize because some of that's total attack in there but it doesn't matter you're still going to be adding that in, in total attack anyway so that's something that's going to be uh, really really good and one place that I did actually forget to get where you're going to get some more stats is actually going to be in your troop, uh, uh, troop appearances. And as you can see right here, I have the, um, where is it there? The bow attack, I have it at 26% already. And the only thing that I'm missing here is the House Reed Spear, uh, House Reed Bowman. And for their House Reed Bowman, you're going to get the 6%, the 9%, which is 15 plus the 12% uh, which is 27%. So if you add that 27% um, onto the 26, that's uh, 53 more percent. So add another 53 more percent onto what we already talked about with the 13,027. And I said, I already told you that we're gonna subtract some from Theon's uh, total attack. So actually we're still looking right around the, about the exact same thing. Um, it's gonna be actually a little bit higher. So right around 1,330% bow attack by itself without the total attack this is an absolutely fantastic build i highly recommend this um it, it may not be the best for a lot of situations um or for some situations i should say but for pvp i think this is a really really good build i think the game might even be moving towards that direction um one thing that i wanted to note at the very end here is that egbert is not um he is not awakened yet and if you look at um egbert has a 50 percent um 50% uh, bowman attack with his specialization. So once that becomes, uh, once that be he becomes awakened, and you get that 1.6% uh, on t you know on top of that, plus if he has um, any his hidden ability, this will be over 100% uh, bowman attack. And so he'll be in every single every he'll be in your lineup no matter what. And that's another thing you don't have to worry about. Once you find the commanders that you want for this bow attack. You just keep those commanders in there. You don't have to swap them out for something else for a different formation because you only have one formation and it's the only thing you need. And looking at here, he also has the total defense as well. So this is a fantastic build. I highly recommend it, especially for you free to play um, to try to push yourself towards this way. You don't have to do this by any means. I'm just recommending this. Um, you can, you know, as, as a free to play, it's obviously it's a little bit different. You're not going to have these some of these commanders that uh, you know in your. In, that, uh, that are obviously like Theon and whatnot, you're gonna, not going to have those Melisandre. Um, so those are obviously two really good commanders. You're not going to have those, but you can still substitute, like, you can substitute Egbert in there. Um, you can substitute in um, uh, Sansa as well, because she has attack and defense, or attack and uh, health. So there's a couple commanders that you're not going to be losing a ton of stats uh, when it comes to that. So you can still keep a really, really good, um, 
uh, you know, beef up your army in that respect. So if you have any questions, comment, make, make a comment underneath uh, the video here, and I'll, I'll get back to you with anything that uh, I can maybe help you with. But, but until next time, Mac out.